Good morning, Meridian. Good morning. I am amazed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're going to go into our time of intercessory prayer. Our verse says, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Our intercessory prayer emphasis is that we want to pray that in ministering to others, we will have the mindset of Jesus who humbly laid down his life for our sake. As I stand here this morning, I assure you that God has something for each and every one of us to do. But you must know that we cannot do these things that God wants us to do unless we are humble. Now, I promised someone here today that I would tell them before I told this story. The Holy Spirit told me today is the day to tell this story. So I'm letting you know I'm going to tell that story now. It's been a few months, but we were doing ministry with the power of a shower. I was kind of in the middle of things. I'm usually on the end down by the shower. God allows me to talk to some folks, praise God. Pastor and Cynthia were up where they give food and necessities. So I was watching these things. I didn't know exactly what was going on at the time, but that's normal for me. <laughs> but anyway, this lady came up, and she had a stroller. And she asked for some diapers. <laughs> Gary said, oh. <laughs> so... Pastor being pastor, let me tell you something. Now, pastor already told us this. If you have to tell somebody you're humble, then you're just not humble. But I'm going to tell you something. Our pastor is a very humble man. You can, you can believe that. You, you can take that to the bank. He's a very humble man. But pastor being pastor, when the diapers were asked for, he went inside because he knew someone had donated some so he went inside and he was getting the diapers and he was thinking are these diapers for a boy or a girl so when he came out Cynthia had to tell him that the diapers was for a dog <laughs> now pastor pastor was well, you know. <laughs> but anyway, then this other lady came up, and she also had a stroller. And when she pulled the little towel back or the blanket, there was a cat there with a beanie on. <laughs> Y'all think I'm making this up, huh? You might say, why is he telling us this stuff? Well, check this out. You see, everything that God allows us to go through, really, he's, he's teaching us something. Now, I have to tell you that after, after this was over, 
Pastor, myself, and Cynthia, we got a little chuckle out of this. Okay, we got more than a little chuckle out of it, but I'm being a little reserved about that. But any, anyway, here, here's the point, okay? Again, God has something for us to do in humility. But if you, if you are not there, if you are not participating then you cannot share in that joy and that fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as always, we praise your holy and your precious name. Father, we're just eternally grateful that you are in control and we're not. Father, we do ask you to continue to forgive us of our shortcomings our worldly ways, our worldly thoughts. Father, please search us, cleanse us, and create in us a clean heart. Father, we know that we have a lot of folks in our congregation that are hurting some kind of way. Father, we ask you just to touch them as only you can, Father. Father, we want to uh, lift up my dear brother right now, Pastor Gary Parker. Father, we thank you for the message you put on his heart that he's going to deliver to us today. Father, please think what is mine and speak what is mouth. Father, your word says that your word never returns void and it would accomplish what you would have it accomplish. Father, this is our prayer today. We love you. We thank you. We sing, ask all these things. In your precious Son's name, our Lord Jesus Christ, and all of God's people said, Amen. Church, we need to pray for our brother, Edward, Edward Hobbs. <laughs> In, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yes, sir. I love my brother, though. I love him. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just come before you and just ask, Lord, for your words to go forward. I pray, Father, that you would fertilize the hearts yeah. of those who will be listening and definitely the heart of the one whom this message is for. I just ask you to watch over me, give me strength. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 Scripture is out of Mark 4. We're going to be reading uh, 35 through 41. I am very much aware of the title, but it has a meaning. This is not something where I want to engage you that, you know, the storm that you are experiencing or having is eventually going to pass. We know that. If we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we know that. But what I want you to start looking at and getting is a new mindset. And that mindset is that the storm is already over. Kind of shocking, right? How many of you believe, and I mean, take your time, and I want to see your hands. How many of you believe that physically Jesus Christ is with you now? Amen. Okay, almost 100%. That's cool. Now, he's with you, regardless of what you're going through. Yes. Jesus is with you. You believe that. You said you believe that. And I pray that you continue to believe that. Yeah. The word of the, of the Lord reads in Mark 4, starting at verse 35. It says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him alone, excuse me, took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. 
A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Yes. Now the setting of this comes out of Mark, and there are several references to uh, Matthew and Luke. But... Christ is out in the sea. He's in a boat, and he's speaking to, a, I want to say a ginormic crowd, but a gigantic crowd from this boat. He's giving them many parables, and he's teaching life lessons. And he's been teaching from this boat all day. So when he says he wants to travel, well, let us go over to the other side. Basically, they're traveling through the Sea of Galilee, and there's storms as part of the normal style of travel in that day. And I don't know if any of you go fishing, but I used to fish a lot, and I'm going to start again here soon. Um, and I normally would go to Lake Henshaw. Some of you might know where that is. So it took me a while, but now I know how to, how to catch catfish if I want to catch catfish, or I know how to catch a bass, or I even know how to catch a little crappie with a little jig on the back end of a stick there. Um, and I know how to do those things, right? Normally, I'll rent a boat unless I'm trying to catch crappie. Crappie, you just catch right at the dock. But um, I would rent a boat. i get there early because it's first come, first serve. And I want to get out there and get the early morning big cats that have come into the shallow. But I know every day around 2 to 2.30, where Lake Henshaw sits, there's mountains around, at least on the west side. And there are lower mountains on the east. But over the mountains, there's a lot of wind that comes. And when that wind comes, it starts stirring up the water. And you get little white caps. And sometimes they could be pretty ferocious to where they're asking all the boats to come in, you know. So I would be obedient and come in most of the time. But sometimes you get a little scared when that boat is, is shaking and moving. And that would happen all of the time. But anyway, you would come on in. And that kind of reminded me on a very small scale of what these fishermen were going through on that Sea of Galilee back in the scripture. It was scary. But these were fishermen. So they knew how to maneuver the waters. Granted, there wasn't an outboard motor that could help them move fast, but they knew how to break their oars out and maneuver the boat and set the anchors and whatever was necessary for them to fish. Sometimes we think we wouldn't be going through a storm if Jesus was really with us. Sometimes we believe that because the storm is occurring, God must have moved to another place and isn't with us. But for the most part, you all agreed that you believe Christ is with you. Every day, all day, regardless of what you're doing, Jesus Christ is with you. And I'm here to tell you that the storm is over because of that mindset and that fact. Yeah. Jesus is with you wherever you are every day. Now, sometimes storms occur out of our own result of our choices. We may have done something that really causes us to, to, to feel these storms, obviously, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but obviously there are times when we make decisions that produce storms. 
Storms can cause you to feel depressed and worthless. Storms can cause you to be panicked and to feel unloved, anxious, unworthy. Storms can even cause you to feel suicidal. Yes. But with Jesus in your boat, yes. the storms may still rock you, but you will not sink. Amen. The storms are going to present to you life-altering decisions that you're going to have to make. But if you know the Lord, the ultimate goal of our lives are to be with him. Yes? No? For some of you, no. Some of you, yes. The ultimate goal, sure, sure. If life is well for us, we want to live as long as we can on this side of glory. Sure, we do. But ultimately, we are all going to go before Christ. Amen. We are all going to cease, cease to exist here. Amen. But with Christ as your captain, you'll be able to endure the storms and celebrate them when they pass. And then even with a relationship with Jesus, your life will experience tragedy but you'll come out better having known Christ. We have to believe that the Lord orders our steps and watches out for us, but we have to listen and obey. Yes. I don't think it's this generation, but it might be the previous one where you had the helicopter parents. And the helicopter parents would always be over their children making sure that they did right or had the greatest number of opportunities to come their way or that they didn't get caught doing some wrong or, or whatever. Not didn't get caught, that you didn't do wrong. Not get caught, didn't do wrong. <laughs> it's not about getting caught, it's about not doing wrong. <laughs> but these helicopter parents are just like Christ who covers over us and he watches out for us, try to provide us with the greatest opportunities that are available to us. And he creates those opportunities for us. And he's definitely watching out. Even when we do wrong, what? He gives us the choice, the mindset of either we're going to do wrong or we're not. We either succumb to the temptation or we say no and take the way of escape that he has already provided for us. It's our choice. Why? Because he gives us free, free will and a free choice. But we still have to listen and obey. In verse 35 and 36, it reads that Christ basically, I'm going to paraphrase, it says, let us go to the other side, and then leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there were other boats around, but that's one of my points is just as you are. There is no need for us to prepare or even, even pack a bag. As Christ only had what was with him, that's what Christ expects from you, just as you are, period. There's no added preparation you need to, 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 to work out. There's no, well, let me get myself together and then we'll be, we'll be focused on that. But just as you are, and I might say in using pastor's words, not in this way, but he does say this word, knucklehead, but just the knuckleheads that you are. Christ understands that. And he accepts you just like that. Whatever the issue is, whatever the considerations that you might be considering to prep before you meet him, he needs you just like you are. Because then he can work with you. All you have to do is just be willing to submit. Christ can meet you where you are. We don't have to prepare ourselves. We don't even have to make ourselves ready. Christ is there. It's like for me, it's like going back home. Now, my mother is in a facility now, but before then, I wouldn't call to say, Mama, can I, can I come and visit? You just go. You just go home. 
just as you are. You don't make preps. You don't say nothing special. You just go home. And then when I would get there, being the baby boy, obviously, there would be some good things for me, all kinds of wonderful foods and pies, and I would definitely have my own pound cake. <laughs> there would be another cake for others, but my cake would be uncut, ready to present to her baby boy every time I can. And then as she got older, it wasn't every time, no, every other time. But that's just how it was. I would go home and spend time with mama, and we would just sit and talk about all kinds of stuff, look at old pictures, watch some crazy stuff on TV, and, and then, you know, drive back home. I didn't, I didn't have to prep myself. I didn't have to make preparations for her to receive me. I didn't have to get permission to go home. And that's just how Christ is. You don't need permission to go home. Just go home. You don't need permission to say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Just say, I'm sorry for my sins and keep it pushing. Amen. You don't need permission. You just need to do it yes. for those of you that need to. Just do it. Christ accepts us just as we are. Yes. We just have to be repentant and willing to obey him. And then, as we learn from this scripture, there are many other boats around, so you're not alone in this walk, people. You might think you are, but you're not. There are so many of us that have gone through so many different tragedies and tragic situations, conditions and things, and even good stuff that we could share with each other. But it requires you to be transparent. And in that transparency, it opens up a vulnerability of us that we really don't want folks knowing a lot about us. <coughs> we really don't want folks all in our business. But frankly, you ain't got no business that God don't know about. Amen. You know? You don't. So if I were to open up with you and to say something crazy that would probably embarrass my daughter, which I'm not going to do, but I'm more than capable of doing that. You know why? Because your judgment of me has no effect on me. His judgment of me is the only effect that, is, that, 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 that matters. That matters. Now, there's some stuff that I've gone through that I can help you with, that I have overcome and through the grace of God have been successful in, 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 in getting through that stuff. Yes. I can help you with. Comes to a, a dying spouse. I can help you with that. Yes. Comes to telling too much of myself, but if it comes to over, over, overeating, Drinking too much. I can help you with that. But it requires us to be transparent and vulnerable with each other. So my mindset is the storm is over. My mindset. And what I'm trying to share with you is I hope you could see that if Christ is with you, the storm's over. Because we fight from victory to victory. We're not trying to get a victory. We are in victory because we know who Jesus Christ is as our Lord and Savior. Amen. So from that, all of this stuff is in his control. You want a promotion on your job, it's in his control. The way they treat you on your job, it's in his control. The way your, 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 your relationship is with your spouse is in his control. What else is there? Your money, your home, your workplace, all of that stuff is in his control. The way your children act is in his control. As he leads you, you can lead them. But it's still in his control. So the storm is over. And the, 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 the point here is that you're not alone. We're not meant to walk this by ourselves. We're, we're, we're meant to be in this Christian walk together. Loneliness is frightful. And we're not designed to, to walk an isolated journey. 
I'm not meant to be Pastor Gary without Pastor Roden. I'm not meant to be a father without having a father to whom I could look up to, to and see how to raise my children. Because I think his children came out pretty good. You know, that's my take on things, you know. So I, I, I had the blessings of having a father and then was able to see how he was always around. He never like left. But a lot of my friends in high school, their fathers left. And there were single moms doing everything. Yes. You know, the church has a, just a side note, as pastor says, a parenthetical note. Um, church has a responsibility in situations like that, especially if the single mom has a line with the church. Men of the church should be men and step up and try to help and assist the rearing of the children that are going to be the future of the church. All men are part of that. So the storms are going to rage and they're going to seem to overwhelm you. That's scripture. So storms are going to happen. Don't be afraid. What are you scared of? It's my question to you. Yeah. Rhetorically. God's with you, right? You said he's right by my side. He sees all that's going on. He knows what you're going through even before you tell him. Yes. So why wouldn't he be the one that you go to? Why wouldn't he be the one you're fighting from victory to victory with? The storm is over. You're going to nearly be swamped. That's what the scripture says. But you're not defeated. Everything is going to come against you, but you're not defeated. Things are going to try and pull you away from God's covering, but you're not defeated. Satan is going to use all manners of evil against you, even in your mind, but you're not defeated. Satan is going to use your pride, your attitude, and even cause you to doubt. Doubt God's power or his effectiveness in your life. But again, you're not defeated. And what Satan does is if he can get just a little bit, <coughs> he's going to let it explode. Because we sin, not because the devil made us do it. We succumb to temptation, not because it's so great and it is there. We decide to sin. We are enticed by our own lust that causes us to sin. So it's important for us to be careful of what goes in our ear gates and our eye gates. Because a whole lot of drama can cause your life to be dramatical. So I used to watch all of this uh, Housewives of Atlanta, and Housewives of Beverly Hills, <laughs> Housewives of New Jersey. Uh, what is that other thing from Atlanta and Miami? A little hot and uh, they, they sing songs, they rappers and trying to be big, big top, whatever. I don't know. Somebody, somebody from Atlanta and Miami. You used to watch all this stuff because I didn't have a choice, right? But now I have a choice. And I, and I, and I still don't watch them now. But I will, I will watch um, Hazel, and I'll watch uh, The Real McCoys, Flying Nun, definitely Andy Griffith, Mayberry, you know, simple stuff where even in the, the, the show, they're having church and they're singing hymns, especially Andy, they always sing hymns and Andy Griffin. Yeah. You know, they sing hymns and, you know, and it's like a simple life. I've had enough drama in my life to last all of y'all lifetimes, <laughs> for real. And I'm so tired of the drama. 
You know, I want to serve the Lord to the best of my ability, and I want to help whoever I can be better at serving the Lord. You know, and I want to gain momentum in serving the Lord. You know, and I believe that that's the ministry here at Meridian is to try to help us gain momentum in serving the Lord. However you feel the Lord has called you to do whatever it is in the ministry for you. But for me, less drama, real simple stuff. You know, my biggest drama is watching a Raider Charger game, you know, and and that's always a good thing for me, especially when the Raiders are winning, you know. But, you know, that's, that's just my choices. But what I will tell you is what goes in your ears and your eyes is going to develop your heart. Yes. And if your heart is squirky, that's my word, the storm isn't over. The storm is always there. And with Christ in your life, the storms, the mindset, the storm being over is where we need to be. Because he only has to say a few words, and it's all done. So Jesus' actions in verses 38 and 39, they're always for our good. I am not aware in God's word where there was anything that went forward for a disciple or a child of God that he meant evil for. Now, sure, there were some things where he hardened Pharaoh's heart or uh, Saul, you know, he told him he wasn't going to, you know, do these things. Even Moses, when he hit the rock instead of speaking to it, you know, he couldn't see the promised land, but it did not take him from the reward of being in heaven. There were some consequences, obviously. But Jesus' actions are always for our good. If you're sick, you hope to be better. You hope to get well. And the fact that we've all made it through coronavirus pandemic, not that it's over, but thus far, is a blessing in and of itself that we probably take for granted, and we shouldn't. But it always is for our good. I mean, think about it. Christ is in the stern of the boat. That's the back for y'all who don't know. And he sleep on a cushion. Now, you know, my vivid imagination, I got him like this on the cushion in the fetal position and enjoying his rest because he's had a busy day, right? Now, he's sleeping his humanity, but it doesn't make him unaware of what's going on around him. Just like you, if you're tired, like I am, and you go home to watch a little TV, about 10 minutes later, TV's watching you, right? And, um, but if someone were to knock on your door or break your window, you don't think you would jump up? Because you're still aware on some minute level. But in crisis terms, he was asleep, but still aware of what was going on. The response of the disciples, my word, is they were experiencing unfaithful panic. I mean, after all, think, I got the Son of God on a boat with me. I've got waves thrashing my boat, pummeling the bow, and, and just flowing all over the boat. And I got the Son of the Creator who created all these things riding with me, yeah. and then I'm going to panic? Why? Because I'm not concerned about him. I'm concerned about me. Yeah. And that's what the disciples were, concerned about themselves, yeah. right? So as a result of that, there is, in my book, a kind of human DNA and a spiritual DNA. The human DNA hits the panic button for life regardless of what's going on. Spiritual DNA allows us to be more Christ-like and to hopefully see the bigger picture of our lives and the influence of our lives on others, which means that we are always creating a legacy of ourselves for other people. 
I want to be a good legacy. I, I, I used to tell my son, my daughter too, but she's, she's a little more loving than my sons, quite obviously, right? Um, so I used to tell my son, you know, I'm in the fourth quarter, man. You know, so I got to make things correct and right. You know, I'm in the fourth, you know, fourth down and minutes to go. And he's like, nah, Dad. You're in the third, and there's time on the clock. So why don't you act like shit, you know? <laughs> but I want to do well. I want to finish well. Amen. I want my children to grow up knowing that their dad loved the Lord. And no, he wasn't a perfect man. But he did the things that he felt the Lord wanted him to do whenever the Lord wanted him to do it. Maybe with a little fussing every now and then, but, you know, I still tried to do what God wanted. And that's the legacy that I'm trying to leave in the third quarter with time left on the clock. <laughs> For real. I'm pressing forward in life. I used to always look behind me and seeing what life could have been or what it was like. That is so futile. It's time to press forward yes. and to look at what you can do. Forget about what's behind you. People say stuff about rearview mirrors. You can't drive forward looking in the rearview mirror. You're going to crash. Try it. Thank you. <laughs> then you'll be calling Alina for your claims. But we need to improve our spiritual DNA so that we can be more Christ-like. Godliness should reign in our life story. Godliness should reign in our life story. So what did Christ do? Let's look at verse 39. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down. You know, kind of feeling like that. The wind died down, and uh, it was then completely calm. I use the term the wind cowardly died down because you got to look and see who they were messing with. They're messing with God. So, yeah. But anyway, I digress. But he rebuked the wind and said, quiet, be still. He calms the storms in our lives just the same way. Storm is over. Your mindset should be that whatever is coming against you is not more powerful than the God you serve. Amen. Your mindset should be that I don't care what battle I'm fighting, God can make me win, can make it better for me as he is glorified, as he is lifted up. Yeah. It's not about you. It's about him. He uses us to glorify himself. That's why he wants all of his children to have great opportunities or the best opportunities that are made available to you. That's why he always watches over us. That's why he's a great helicopter parent over us as we allow him to be. Our choices should be Christ, yes. not ourselves. Our storms are over, not because we say so, but it's because Christ Jesus said stop. Yes. That's the bottom line. You need a victory. You already start from victory. That's the first mind-blowing thing. I'm already victorious, but I need another victory. You are victorious because you are sons and daughters of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You got to believe that stuff. I believe it. And I know that he has worked some miracles in my life. There are areas in each of our lives that Christ 
needs to say stop to. There are attitudes that we have and things that come against us and even some things that we freely do. Christ is saying stop. You know what they are. You have to look in the proverbial mirror as you examine yourself and your walk and how people are receiving you. They should know that you are a child of God on your job. Your neighbors should know that you are a child of God. In fact, you should know your neighbors' names. At least adjacent house and across the street. Okay? Let me be specific. <laughs> but the more people that you know, the more influence you can have. And that's important. Because we want to promote Christ. We want to be examples for others to see. So Christ, Christ has a couple of questions for the disciples we find in verse 40. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Now, their fear comes from a couple of reasons, and the first of which is the fact that he could do this. That he could command the elements of the earth, the wind and the waves. Now, that's some powerful stuff. Do you? Well, I won't say that. Anyway, that's powerful. But the second question he asks is, do you still have no faith? So still is the operative word here. So obviously, <clears throat> Christ had an idea about the faithfulness of his disciples at that time. The faithfulness of his disciples came out because they screamed at him, don't you care if we drown? Now, he could have said no and went back to sleep. But it would not have been the lesson that we need to hear. I would suggest that perhaps one of the lessons is to teach faith. That you could have faith in him. Perhaps the entire event was to teach the disciples to have faith. And for some of us, the Lord is asking, do you still have no faith? Whatever you might be going through. Now, I know it's quiet. I was expecting a couple of amens from Ed, but it's all good. It's very quiet. But whatever you're going through, do you still have no faith? Is God not able to take care of your problems? Is he not able to move in your direction? Is he not able? Why? Because you won't let him? Are you that powerful? So the question that we have is we have no faith because we think we got it. God is with me. Okay? I'm going to use my mind because I know that he's with me. I'm not going to walk down a dark alley with 12 people on the other side, and I'm going to walk through because I know God is with me. What I'm going to do is God is with me. He tells me to use my mind. I'm going to turn around and go the other way because I can use the mind. I have a mindset and free will to choose. But when life's issues start coming against us, and we know that it will take a supernatural influence then we need to search out Christ, search out God, search out the spirit of God, and allow them to handle my business. Questions Christ asks us, and I'm, I'm pretty much done. After all I have done for you, are you still without faith? Each of us can start going through 
a list of the blessings that have been bestowed upon us. After all I have done for you, are you still without faith? Haven't I shown you that I am capable of taking care of you, providing for you? Do you trust me? Or do you trust man? Now that was a hard one for me a few years ago, right when I was retiring. Because in, I don't know, some of you guys, but all of us when we're in business and in executive roles in business, we play politics. And everybody plays politics. So the person who tells you I don't play politics, they made a choice to play that politic. So we all play politics. Yes. And it was a tough one because you might feel you align yourself with the rising stars and that they will take care of you in the business. Trust me, that's not how it works. And then once I found out that all promotion is from the Lord, that changed my mindset. But in Psalms 118.8, it tells you it is better, this is NIV, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. I like the King James Version. It says it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Who is your confidence in? Who is your confidence with? I have a term. Maybe I've coined it. I don't know. But it's something I live by. It's called Godfidence. My confidence is in God. So whatever is going on, God can take care of it. As long as I am willing and obedient to the task that he has placed and the call that he has put upon my life, God's got this. It's not about being happy. I want to share that with you. God doesn't promise happiness. Amen. But he does promise joy. Amen. Unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. So the disciples' actions, they were terrified. These winds and these waves obey him. They're asking, who is this guy? Obviously, they didn't know or they had no full comprehension who Christ was at that time. They had a reverence for the overwhelming nature of the presence of a supernatural power when he told those winds to stop and those waves to cease. Similarly, if we were standing at the base of a mountain and it blew up, like a volcano. Sure, we would be terrified, but to watch it would show the supernatural power of the creation of God. It's awesome. When I was vacationing a little bit ago, I was watching these mountains that were forming along this fjord, which is a glacier. And these mountains were just like, like God had a canopy and he was just drawing these pictures and it was just so amazing to see the work of the Lord in nature. Let's you know that there is a God because this does not happen from a big, what they call it, a big bang Kapuyao, everything created, and then it forms from chaos into order. It doesn't work that way. But that's what they teach us in school. So we, we get it right on the test, and then we throw the test away. You know? But our reaction should be that we have a comprehension of who Christ is, at least at this time in our lives. So three things should happen, and I'm going to close. When the storms of life come about you, and you are full of anxiety 
and panic. First thing, seek out who controls that storm yes. and believe that he's going to help you endure it. Second thing, have faith in your Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, to do supernatural things in your life. So we have to seek him out, have faith that he's going to do something supernatural. And then the last thing, which is probably even the most important, is to stay faithful. And do not become a wavering disciple. Stay true. Stay true. Those of you who are married want your spouse to stay true. And marriage is the relationship that the Lord uses to de describe and explain Christ and the church. Christ wants his church to stay true. And he promises them that he's got them. He'll take care of them. All right. So I want to do something different than we've done before. I learned this in our spiritual discipline class again, but I was taught it in seminary. I want to read a scripture to you. And I want you to kind of close your eyes. Don't fall asleep. But just imagine these words from the Lord and see what sticks to you. Because I want us all to look at the storm being over. Yes. Not always coming. That whenever it comes, I'm going to seek out the Lord. I'm going to expect him to do something. Yes. And I'm going to stay faithful and true. Yes. Knowing that, I'm fighting from victory to victory. Yes. I'm not trying to get there. I'm already there. Anyway, so let's just close our eyes. I'm going to read to you Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Yes. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, yes. or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Open your eyes. The purpose there is to hear a word 
from the Lord and to see which words or phrases minister to you Amen. or brought something to your desire. Simply put, if you believe God is with you and know him as your personal Lord and Savior and have a relationship with him, when the storm comes, let him have it. Yes. Stick with him. Stay faithful. Stay true. And you will be amazed at the supernatural actions that he will move for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity we had to come before you in word and in conversation, Father. We know, Lord, that your word will do what it was meant to do. Again, Father, I am not sure who this sermon was for, but I believe it was for someone. And I believe, Father, that your word will accomplish what it was meant to. So, Father, we are praying for our mindsets. That our mindset, first off, to have a relationship with you is one of the greatest things that we can do. After which, the next mindset is to let you do you and stop trying to control you, to move in our direction like you are some genie in a bottle or a coffee on the shelf when we need it. We need to be a lot more focused on our service to you. So let us be good servants, finishing well, with time left in the third quarter. Some of us haven't even reached halftime. But Lord, we thank you for all that you do, for all that you are, and ask your continued blessings of favor upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.